Praise the Lord. We're going to have a very serious session now. Concerning the journey of Joshua and the children of Israel. We've we'll seen the victory. The falling of Jericho walls. And a great victory that they had had until this time. Now we're going to see the other side of the story. You need to be prepared for that. Why don't you stand up? And then you close your eyes. And you lift your mind towards heaven. Say, no, Lord, the secret you have in this passage, in this study, I want to see. I want to receive. I do not want to fall into the same pit that the careless people fell into. I do not want to break my bones in the same ditch that these people unknowingly, carelessly fell into. I want to follow the victory path. And I want to avoid the deadly trap of the enemy. So that it will be continuous victory. Constant victory. Victory without a moment of defeat. Success without an event of failure. Following the Lord through until we become triumphant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. What a joy. When children gather around the table with their father. What a joy. When we come at the feet of Jesus Christ. And we say, Lord, feed us. With this living bread, living truth. Until we hunger no more. Lord, so saturate our lives. With the principles of success and victory and triumph. Until we do not know a moment of defeat. A moment of failure. Lord, we pray you make us see. What the other people went through. So that we can go through victoriously and triumphantly. And as we come to this side of the story. Of the army. Of the people of Israel. In Joshua's time. A dark spot. In a bright picture. A dark spot. On a white canvas. As we come to this side, the failure, avoidable failure, the defeat, avoidable defeat of these children of Israel in their glorious time, their glorious period. And yet we have this side of their story. Lord, we pray this will make every one of us to watch and pray. To look and be vigilant. And not to rest. On the success and the victory. Of yesterday. Of yesteryears. But you know. That every day. Every moment of our lives. We must keep on watching. And help us Lord. All the wisdom we need. All the insight we need. All the revelation we need. Before we take any step, grant unto us that Lord has story that has recorded great, good, positive, encouraging, inspiring chapters in the past chapters that will not come to a chapter that is dark and gloomy. 
a child, a chapter that will regret that chapter should not have been in my life, in my biography. Lord, we pray that you help us and give us sufficient grace, Amen. abundant grace. So that we'll be able to live the way you want us to live and do what you want us to do at the time you want us to do it in the way you want us to do it. And yours will be the glory. Ours will be the blessing. And then the people of God will be edified in everything. Amen. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Here we come to a chapter that Joshua might have wished did not happen. Here we come to a chapter that the children of Israel might have wished were not written. Here we come to an event that the people of God would have wished did not happen. Here we are going to read something. That the Canaanites should not have read. You know there are times. You read something. In the papers. You'll be reading about. This. This. And this. And it appears as if. The world. Has eventually. Working up. To the fact that. The church. Is a militant victorious church. And they're writing this good story about the church. And this good story about the church. And that good story about the church. And it appears at the last that now we have arrived. Even the world sees. That the church is militant and triumphant. And all of a sudden. You pick up the newspaper of the day you tune on the radio of the day and they are blasting through the airwaves what happened to the church and all the people of the world are hearing that and this is a kind of news bad news sells more than good news this is kind of news they want to hear and the church picks the paper that morning and they said we wish this did not happen but it's an egg it's falling on the ground and we cannot gather it up again and make it a whole egg it's gone it's like milk that is peeled already and it's already on the ground. What can we do? We cannot gather it back again. We wish this chapter were not there, but it's there. Joshua, how do you feel? You have found Joshua on his feet. You have found Joshua commanding the army. You have found Joshua asking the one that is saw, drawing the sword. Who are you? Tell me who you are. Are you for us? Or you are for our adversaries? You have found Joshua bold courageous authoritative commanding and you have found the people of the lord you found the priest bearing the ark and you have found them courageously going into the break of jordan standing there like emissaries from heaven ambassadors of the king of kings knowing that we stand here in the face of the ages all the faith of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, of Moses gathered together and dumped into them. And you have this courageous army. And as they stepped on Jordan, River Jordan parted into two. And you find these children of Israel bold, courageous. They looked at the heap of water. They said, you remain there till we pass through. Faith in everybody. Now we can conquer anyone. And then you find them picking up the stones, carrying on their shoulders. Maybe they were singing what they were carrying those stones. This is what God has done. A memorial, a monument of the great mighty manifestation of the power of God. And then they now came, they were circumcised. And they rejoiced in obeying the Lord together. And then the Lord said, get up. This battle, this is the first battle you are going to have. And the method is not like the method of the Egyptians. 
The method is not like the methods of the Canaanites. How are you going to win your victory? Just walk around. A walk of faith. A talk of faith. An action of faith. And he walked around one day, second day, and then the sixth day. On the seventh day, get ready. You are going to see something today that you never saw. Look at the walls. How high they are. Then he looked at the walls. And then the Lord said, only one shout will break those walls down. Not two, not three. It's going to be simpler than your thought. And then eventually, as they went on, seven times, then the priest blew the trumpet in unison. That means all the trumpets sounding together. And it's like as their hearts were united, their trumpets were united. As their hearts were united, their shout was united. Joshua, officers, priests, people, just one sound. It was like a thunder. And it was like an explosive. Because that united force attracted another voice from heaven like a thunder and blew down all those walls and those canaanites that viewed everything in jericho they couldn't believe their ears the sounds they heard and the sight they saw they couldn't believe as everything collapsed and came down and there was nobody to resist them the men of all went into the city everything totally was devastated in verse 27 of joshua chapter 6 so the lord was with joshua and his fame was noised throughout all the country everybody heard great news good news have you ever heard this that a single shout brought all the walls down and then chapter 7 and then chapter 7 and you know sometimes when you have a great minister and the lord has magnified him and the lord has exalted him and the lord has blessed his ministry and you've read about it and then in your heart you're saying if i could have just 10 percent of his victory and success if i could have just a little chance a fraction of his opportunity and every time you read about him you're always saying this is like a star and this is like somebody up there this one has a bright shining star i wish i could be like this and all of a sudden one day you then read something that you find this man he couldn't stand on his feet anymore his knees were shaking and his bones were weak and his backbone is like straw and then his voice was trembling and tears were coming from his eyes and then the the, 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 the cameraman they took his picture and they put it there in the newspaper and then you find him lying on the ground he cannot even stand up he puts dust on his head and he puts the ashes on his face and he says oh god oh god what am i going to do in the presence of all these enemies so this is my hero that is crying this is my hero that is lying on the ground what shall we do that's what we're looking at today a sport a dark sport in this white canvas something happened to them let me read this story to you in joshua chapter 7 reading from verse 1 but the children of israel committed a trespass in their corset sin for achan the son of kamai the son of zabdi zabdi the son of zerah the of the tribe of judah took of their corset sin and the anger of the lord was kindled against the children of israel and joshua sent men from jericho to ai which is beside bethaven on the east side of bethel and spake unto them saying go up and view the country and the men went up and they viewed ai 
And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor either, for they are but few. So they, they are went up either of the people, about three thousand men. And they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty, about thirty and six men. For they chased them from before the gate, even unto Chebarim. And smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua arranged his clothes. And he fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the even tide. And he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought these people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites? To deliver us, to deliver us. Would to God we had been content, we had been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it. The Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it. This is not going to be a private news. This is not going to be classified news. This is going to be something everybody will be saying. Have you read it? Let me see. Have you heard it? Tell me. That the children of Israel, those fer ferocious people, those powerful people, those conquering people, that they were conquered by little AI. Tell me the story. And then Joshua said, For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it, and shall environ us round, and cut off our name from the earth. And what will thou do to thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore lies thou, lies thou thus upon thy face? Israel has sinned. And they have also trespassed my, co my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of their cursed sin, and have also stolen and assembled also. And they have put it even in their own store, among their own store. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were a cause neither will i be with you anymore that's the greatest shock of joshua's life i will be with you i will never leave you i will never forsake you I've, I've not I commanded you be strong and of good courage for I will be with you as I was with Moses so will I be with you now God said no I reverse that because there is no eternal security for a sinning Christian there's no eternal security for a disobedient soldier there is no eternal security for a compromising leader. I told you, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And you think that gave license to you, to the children of Israel. Look at the promise of God. God cannot lie. He said, he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And then you took my mercy and my promise and my goodness and my covenant keeping faithfulness you took that for granted and now see what israel has done and because of that joshua you will not like to hear this but this is it i'm withdrawing my promise i'm withdrawing my power i'm withdrawing my partnership with you Two cannot walk together except they be agreed. 
see what I've done for you. These few days, not up to one month. These few days, see what I've done to you for you. I have given you encouragement. I've given you promise. These few days, not up to one week. I've already opened the, uh, the, the, uh, the river Jordan before you. These few days, I've made you to see the captain of the Lord's souls. These few days. And then I've sent him with the sword in his hand. That he will go before you into all the Canaanites. And I will destroy all your enemies for you. These few days. These few days I made you to see how I blew down. I tore down. And I destroyed all the walls of Jericho. These few days. I have shown you that I'm a faithful God. I'm a mighty God. I'm a powerful God. And if I say it, I will do it. You've got the evidence. Now you took my mercy for granted. And now Israel has sinned against me. And because of that, all right. Since you will not pay your deal. The deal you are supposed to pay is just obedience. If I say, don't touch that, then don't touch it. That's all I expect from you. It's like pay your house rent. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And I give you a portion of it. See. I'm giving you the land of Canaan. Seven, you are one nation. I'm clearing seven nations for you. And I'm going to clear them all out of the way. And give seven great, mighty, cultivated nations. I'm going to give it to you, only one nation. And then I'm doing that. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And I'm going to give you an inheritance there. I'm going to give you houses there. Houses you didn't build. I'm going to give you vineyards there. Vineyards you did not plant. All I'm asking for you as your house rent. Is that you just obey me. And see what you have done. If this is the way we are going to do it. Alright. Go your way. I will draw my promise. I will not be with you anymore. But then the Lord gave. This Lord is wonderful. Then he gave a, a possibility. As, as he said, neither will I be with you anymore except wonderful. There's still a chance. There's an opportunity. There's still something you can do. It's not all lost yet. The chance is not all gone yet. The privilege is not a lost yet. Joshua, you can make up your mind. But now on this side of glory, on this side of heaven, Joshua, you can make up your mind. On this side of the divine, what it is, is now I will be with you no more. I'll get myself concerned with other things. I'll do other things now. See, Joshua, because I've been giving you promise upon promise upon promise, you think I don't have any other thing to do. You think you are the only one on earth I'm concentrating on. I'm also the master and the governor and the king of the angels. There's a lot of administration to do in heaven. And also the whole universe. I have a lot of other things to do, Joshua and Joshua. And then the other nations too. And all these other nations too, I created them. And I need to also think about them now. I'm going to take vacation from you, Joshua. I'm going to take my leave of you, Joshua. I'm going to just leave you by yourself, Joshua. Take care of yourself now. I will be with you no more. But only one thing will bring me back. Except, except you destroy the accursed from among you. But thank God for Joshua. He went to work immediately. We'll go to work immediately. You know, when the Lord has been so favorable to us, when the Lord has been so wonderful to us, and is giving us all these miracles, and is giving us all these promises, and is giving us all these spiritual benefits, and then maybe we became careless, and we took the mercy of God for granted. And then God is saying, all right, if, that's the, if that is the way you are going to repay me, 
If that's the way you are going to react and respond to all the favors I've given you. Have you counted your blessings, naming them one by one, and see what the Lord has done for you? Have you counted your blessings one by one, and see where you would have been if, if I didn't come to you, if I didn't bless you, if I didn't save you? Have you, count your bless, have you counted your blessings one by one, and you have seen the great things the Lord has done? How are you repaying the Lord? And if the Lord shall withdraw himself from you, and say, all right, you think now it's automatic. You think now the victory is automatic. The joy is automatic. The shouting is automatic. And the bringing down the walls is automatic. If that's the way you think, all right, I leave it to yourself. And live without me for another week. Those giants are still there. And those wall cities are still there. And those enemies are still there. They don't want you to get into the land. And if you ever get into the land, Joshua and Israel, it will be because the almighty God said he will put his dread and fear in the hearts of those Canaanites. If I release those Canaanites and I don't put fear in their hearts for you and then I leave you by yourself naked and weak. In your natural strength, you'll see what will happen in one day. And Joshua said, Lord, thank you for giving him that condition. He said, except you destroy the accursed sin from among you, I'll do it immediately. I love Joshua. We should be like Joshua. And you know, it's sometimes, it's not good to make a mistake. But you know, sometimes we make mistakes. And sometimes we go beyond mistake. And then we even, we commit sin. It's not good to commit sin. It's not good to commit sin. But sometimes it happens that somebody commits sin. And then he falls. But you know, a person that falls and rises immediately. A person that falls and says, God, I know it. I've seen it. I'm sorry. That's all. That's what God is looking for. But a person that falls and is rolling there on the ground. And God says, you are falling. Yes, am I the first person on earth that fell? Am I the only person in the world that fell? You are defeated. Yes, am I the only one in the world defeated? What ha what's happening that has never happened before? That's the danger. To remain in that defeat, but not Joshua. Immediately, God showed Joshua, see what has happened. The children of Israel, they have taken up their concert scene. And now I will never, I will not be with you anymore. This is the holy God. This is the transparently pure God. He's transcendent. This God is a kind of Pure, pure God is very difficult to behold him with your naked eyes. And then you went into sin. Bye bye Israel. You are gone. And then Joshua needed to do so. And this is the difficult thing leaders have to do sometimes. To fish out. To find out where the sin is. And to deal with that sin. Because you know, every sinner has relatives. Every sinner has friends. Every backslider has friends. Every backslider has a web of relationships. That makes it difficult to a person like Joshua to deal with the man sometimes. Because when you're dealing with a man, you're not just dealing with that man. He has relationships. Webs of relationships. Connections. And in leadership, what makes it difficult sometimes for those who are too much afraid of hurt or pain. For those who do not know the principle of, ki of the kingdom. No gain without pain. If, if we don't know that, we'll be so much afraid of the pain. But you know, if you're going to have gain, there must be pain. Joshua knew that. And therefore Joshua said, I know this is going to be painful. I don't know how many friends Achan has. 
But whatever friends they have, I have a choice. Either to stay with the friends of Achan and leave Achan alone and miss the power and the protection of God. Or deal with Achan and suffer the pain that will come from the relatives and from the friends of Achan. If he has any friends, thank God, as we look at this story, it is another beautiful thing in Israel at this time. Achan and his family had no friend that will support them, that will say, why did Joshua do that? They knew that Achan had done something wrong and the whole nation turned their backs on Achan. That's a good nation. And now we come to this study. Avoidable causes of failure and defeat. They could have avoided it in so many ways. Avoidable causes of failure and defeat. I divide the message to three parts. Number one. The records of failure and defeat. The record of failure and defeat. Number two, reasons, the reasons for failure and defeat. The reasons for failure and defeat. Number three, the remedy for failure and defeat. The remedy for failure. And defeat. Number one, the records of failure and defeat. Let's see this. It says, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in their cursed sin for Achan, the son of Kamai, the son of Zabdi, and the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, a good tribe, a bad man in a good tribe. The tribe of Judah. That's the tribe of David. A good tribe. But a bad man. In a good tribe. A bad member. In a good church. Of the tribe of Judah. And took of the accursed sin. And the anger of the Lord. Was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethaven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. Go up and view the country. That's what he told them. Go up and view the country. And they were told, and the men went up and viewed the country. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up. Hmm. Shut up. You are not sent to bring counseling to the leader. To advise the leader. Go up and view the land. Go up and come back to tell me what you've seen there. I didn't send you to come and give me advice. Joshua should have told them. And you see the mistake of some little, little things. Some little, little things. Go up and view the land. And they went to view the land. And when they came back, they came back, not only what they saw, yes, they said what they saw, but then they said, here is the advice we give Joshua. Here is the counseling we give Joshua. Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite AI. Who are these people? We don't even know their names. You know, there are some of these anonymous letters to leadership. And they waste our time. And they will say, you know, some people, we don't even know them. Oh, they say, we know that deeper life at this time, your goal, your dream, your desire is to bring the holiness back to the church. And then they begin to say, hey, Pastor Jesus, can I advise you? They don't even ask whether they can advise. And they begin to say, hey, if you do this, if you do this, keep your counseling to yourself. It has never worked. They came back to Joshua. 
And he said, let not all the people go up. Just send about two or three thousand. Then they said, make not all the people go. Don't make all the people to labor either. And the danger is this. When they have even told the people, if they have, and they have said, we already counseled him. That he shouldn't, he should let us rest at this time. He shouldn't send everybody. Then if Joshua wants to send everybody, they say, he never listens to counseling, you see? He never listens to other people. He's so, you know, he's, he's so egotistic. And he's so full of himself. And he thinks he's the only one that can receive from God. And that's what they say behind us. They say he never listens. If he listened, this would have happened. This would have happened. And people talking to this Joshua. Shouldn't he know what you do? And not send all the people there? How do you know you should not send all the people there? What they should have done is they should have come back and said, We have seen the land. It's a very few people living there. And then stop there. And Joshua would have gone to God. Oh God, we have viewed the land. What is the next step? Don't forget in chapter 5. He lifted up his eyes and he saw a man with the sword drawn. And he said, are you for us of our adversaries? And that man replied and said, nay. But as the captain of the army, the captain of the Lord of hosts, have I come. He should be getting his directives from the captain. And after they have got the information, all he should have done is to go back to God. What do I do next? If he had gone back to God, he would not have sent people to AI. God would have said, I'm glad you came, Joshua. You know what? There's sin in the camp. And what he did later, after already the water had been poured on the ground, we cannot collect it back. That see people have died and we cannot get them back. After the milk had been spilled. And we cannot get the milk back. After the egg is falling on the ground. And is already uh, on the ground. And we cannot recollect it. Uh, all the, that they were doing later. They could have done earlier. If he had gone to God. And that's why sometimes. If you want to advise. Be very careful. And swallow it to start with. Like you swallow your saliva. And then say, I'm going to wait and be praying. If this is what God wants the man to do, he will do it. That's, it's a different thing if the man calls you. And he said, brother, we're leaders together. We've been in this church now for a long time together. We're having this challenge of going to AI. Can we pray together? I need your support in prayer. Paul the apostle said, pray for us. Pray for us. And you can pray for us. And then we can hold hands together spiritually not literally and then we can pray and the lord can give you a word the lord can give me a word they will know that this is the word of the lord but just so presumptuously come and just say do this and do this and do this as if leadership has now abdicated its place of authority and now it's given to you and so they should have prayed. Or Joshua should have prayed. And eventually it says. In this verse 4. And so went up hither of the people. About 3,000 men. And they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them. About, three about, about 30 and 6 men. For they chased them. From before the gate. Even unto Shebarim. And smote them. In the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. They became very weak with that defeat. The question is, why did that happen? We'll look at that later. The records. Let's look at Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 40. Records of failure and defeat. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 14. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the, into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we'll be here. 
and will go up unto the place which the Lord has promised for we have seen what happened here is uh, you know when the 12 spies came back and then the when the 10 spies gave their own version of what they saw and they said we cannot go up we cannot do it those people are giants and then the children of Israel began to cry they began to weep and then God said all right tell them i'm not happy with them only Caleb and Joshua will get to that land. Then the people all of a sudden, they just changed their minds. They said, Moses, we're ready to go now. We're going up. We will go to the land and we'll go and fight. Verse 41. And Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Why do you want to go now? The Lord just told us, it's not with us anymore to lead us into the land at this time. If we're going to go at all, we should go back to God and pray. No, no prayer. We're ready to go now. Ready to go now. And Moses said, no, don't go. And he said, they will go. Go not up. For the Lord is not among you. That ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you. And ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you, but they presume to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Moses said, all right, if you want to go, you will not take the ark of the Lord with you, and I will not go with you. They said, that's all right. If you don't want to go, don't go. We can go without you. You know those people? Do we need the pastor every time? We can go without him. He doesn't want to come for the program. And he says he's not happy with this and that. All right, let him not come. We'll do it ourselves. We can do it without him. We can do it without the ark of the Lord. You know that kind of presumption. And when you talk like that, obviously, we have disagreement. How do you think? When you say ministry, and God has given you a leader. You know, I don't always say it, but you got saved through me. You got developed through me. And all this education we're talking about, you got it through me, the understanding. Even the ministry you're doing, whatever ministry you're in, if God didn't choose me to gather all this large crowd together, will you have chance to minister to them? God used me to make the opportunity available to you to minister to all this crowd. If you're an overseer, if God didn't use me to get this started, how will you be an overseer? God used me to raise you up and to provide those people. Sometimes we don't know, we don't remember. And if God is giving you the ability to heal the sick and then to cast out devils and you're successful in the healing ministry and in the casting out devils deliverance ministry, where did you learn it? Is it not all the workers retreat, all the revival sessions, all those Thursday miracle revival sessions? Is it not how you learn it? And if uh, you, you young men and women who are coming to sink here, Am I not the one that brought all this together? What if I said, I'm tired and there is no program this time? Nobody is going to crucify me for that. If I wrote to all the state of Assyrians and I said, please uh, in your stage, find old cassettes and play to the uh, group coordinators and the coordinators and the women coordinators because look at how I've been trapped around. An old man already has gray hair. And therefore, please, permit me this time. Let me rest this time. The state of Assyria are not going to kill me because they'll say it's true. It's true. Daddy needs rest. If I didn't bring all this large crowd together, you young men and women singing here to them, will you have any chance singing to anybody? God used me to stretch the carpet on the ground for you, to come and step on the carpet. All these instruments you find here. Are you going to play instrument to empty building if I didn't gather the people together? But we forget. 
I will say, if he's not interested, ask him. Let him not be interested. We will do it. What will you do? What will you do? Without cooperation with your Moses, with your leader. Why are we thinking like that? And so these people said, we will go. Moses will want to say, stay. You don't want the Ark of the Covenant to go with us. You have a monopoly of the Ark of the Covenant. Stay. Keep it to yourself. We will go. Look at verse 45. Then the Amorites came down and the Canaanites which dwelt in, in that hill and smote them and discomfited them even unto Homer. Uh, they defeated them. That's the reason why they were defeated. It's a record of their failure. And uh, let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 4. For Samuel chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1. In 1 Samuel chapter 4, reading from verse 1. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines pitched in Ephek. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when the joint battle Israel was meeting before the Philistines and the slew of the army in the field, about 4,000 men. Again, they defeated quite a lot of them. Records of failure and defeat. And then we're told in verse 3, when the people were come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, wherefore? As the Lord's meeting us today before the Philistines, let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it comes among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So the people say to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord, of whose which dwellers between the cherubims and the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Phinehas. Were, were there was the ark of the covenant of God and when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp all Israel shouted with a great shout so that the earth rang again and when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout they said what meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews and they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid. For they heard, God is come into the camp. And they said, woe unto us. And there, and, and there has not, he said, woe unto us. For there has not been such a sin hitherto for. Woe unto us. Who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and quit yourselves like men. Now, have you seen what's happening here? The children of Israel, they were not in right tune relationship with the Lord at this time. And then they went to the battlefield. And 4,000 of them killed, destroyed. And then they said, oh, we made a mistake. We didn't bring the ark of the Lord with us. And Ophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli. And everybody knew the life of Ophni and Phinehas. Committing royalty of the women, even in the temple. And everybody knew in Israel. But he said, well, they are sons of Eli, of the high priest. Let them bring the ark. When they brought the ark, the people, as they saw the ark, they shouted a great shout. They said, aha, uh -huh. the Philistines will know today the ark has never failed. It's the mark of the presence of the almighty God. When the Philistines heard that they shouted like that, they said, What's happening? What's happening among the camp of the children of Israel? And they said, it's the ark of the covenant that came. These people said, woe unto us. That is the representation of their God. Anywhere their God is, that means we're finished. After they said that and they were afraid, all of a sudden, they became courageous. They said, no. 
They said, be strong. And quit yourselves like men, oh ye Philistines. God, you know, put it in their heart and said, don't fear them. I'm not one of them. And when God tells your enemy, when God signals to your enemy, why are you afraid of those people? As if they are my, I'm not one of them. Why are you afraid of the ark? As if you are going to be destroyed. Don't be afraid. When God puts it in the heart of your enemy. That they should not be afraid of you anymore. Then something is going to happen. So the Philistines said. Be strong. And quit you like men. O ye Philistines. That ye be not servants unto the Hebrews. As they are being to you. Quit yourselves like men and fight. And the Philistines fought. And Israel was smitten. Well, the ark in their midst, Israel was still smitten. And, then, and they fled every man into his tent. And there was a very great slaughter. For there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. Before the ark came, only 4,000 died. After they even brought the ark, 30,000 people died. And the ark of God was taken. And the two sons of Eli, Ophna and Phinehas, were slain. The defeat and the failure. Point number two. Reasons for failure and defeat. Let's come back to Joshua chapter 7. Reasons for failure and defeat. In Joshua chapter 7, reading from verse 6. And Joshua arranged his clothes. It was a dark moment. For him, the sun refused to shine. Yes, the sun was shining, but he couldn't see the light of the sun. For him, he lost appetite. The food was there, he couldn't eat. For him, victory had turned to defeat. For him, the weak enemies had become powerful, mighty, strong, unconquerable enemies enemies. For him, little air had become a formidable obstacle that will not allow them to go into the land of promise. And now Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening. Until the evening. God will not even talk to him until the evening. They came back and he said, this is what we saw. 36 people already dead were defeated. And then the people were so much afraid. Can you imagine God not talking to Joshua? He's fasting. He's not eating. He's lying on the ground. He has dust on his head. God, talk to me. No, I'm sorry, Joshua. I don't feel like talking to you. For God... To restrain his voice. And for God to withhold his revelation. Until the evening. And we're just looking at him. Like that. It's like God saying. Joshua, Israel. That's how you are going to repay me. And you're lying down there. You want me like your errand boy. Your servant. Always jumping up for you. Always serving you. Always spreading the table for you. Always doing everything for you. And this little honor and respect you couldn't give me. And you're lying down there. Keep on lying down there. And God will not even talk to him. As we think about this. That was just fasting. And he was saying, Lord, what are we going to do? I don't know what you are going to do. We are here. We are neither in the wilderness nor in the land of Canaan. Where are we going to stay? I don't know. Find where you are going to stay. These enemies are there. And if we just stay like this, it will not take time. They will wipe us out. And that's, and that's the result of what you have done. You know, we need to respect and honor God. And we need to see what God has done for us. And if you compare what God is expected to do for him, it's very minor, it's minute, it's very small. Compared with what God has done. Joshua, look at all these walls of Jericho. 
If you were to collect money together and buy a bulldozer that will pull all these walls down, do you know how much it will cost you? Only a single shout did that for you. Why don't you count your blessings? Now, look at all those, uh, all those uh, people in Jericho. If you were to gather an army together, do you know the cost of the spears and the arrows and the guns you will have to buy? To be able to do that for you. Almost without price. And God did that for you just like that. And some of us, you know, being in many states uh, and many countries this year. In, uh, in Ghana. A brother that just preached, uh, you know, now before I prayed, that's uh, one of our leaders from Ghana. In Ghana. Or oh, there last year. And this woman had been eating clay will go on the ground and grab clay and put and be eating 27 years and then we had that crusade in Accra Ghana and then at the mention of the name of Jesus that woman became so delivered that for 27 years she had been eating clay she wasn't eating clay anymore if you calculate the money that it will take for them to treat that woman so that all this eating of clay for 27 years will go away. Calculate the amount of money you need to do that. And many, many other things that happened in many countries, in many places. If we calculate the money that the people are paid to medical doctors to have all that done to them or for them. It's almost without calculation. And the children of Israel did not understand that. And they not just said, only one thing I require. Every, all the spoils of war after Jericho, I give it to you. But this first fruit of Jericho, that now you are going to conquer. Everything, gold, silver, anything you see there, give that to me. That's all I want. All the other cities have been giving you victory. And there are many cities you are going to cover. And there are many villages you are going to cover. I told you already. There are seven nations I'm giving you free of charge. All the spoils you see there, I give you. Only this one of Jericho, give to me. That's all. And he couldn't give that to God. That's what brought the problem. Problems don't just arise. Problems just don't grow from the ground. It doesn't fly in the sky. We cause problems. But we'll drive the problems away. And so we're told here. Now Joshua began to pray. Oh Lord in verse 8. What shall I say? When Israel turns their backs. Before their enemies. For the Canaanites. And all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it. And shall environ us. Round. And cut off our name from the earth. And what will thou do to thy great name? And the Lord said, Alright Joshua, I see your concern. I see you are ignorant of what is happening. You know I'm God. And you know when I give a promise, I fulfill the promise. You know the vision I have. The vision started from the time of Abraham and then Isaac and Jacob. Joshua, you understand? I gave this vision to Moses. And now Moses is gone. And I put you there. Why didn't you walk prayerfully and carefully? Why didn't you ask me? Why are you taking me for granted? If there, are, if there is a company and there is a director. And then there is a manager under that director. And it's the director that put all the capital to make this company come up. And then the manager is employed to take care of the company. But the manager did not put a dime, a penny, a cobble in the company. And this manager is given all the free hand on the game and everything and then the director who put all the capital down just said this is all i need a little token the rest 
take care of the workers, take care of the officers, take care of the priests, take care of the people of Israel. Just this from Jericho is what I need. Is that too much? No. And so God now wanted to talk to him. And as we look at our lives, what he has done for us, what he has given us, and a church like this, and the people that put all this together, and the sacrifice of many other people that brought all this together, and now we have a chance over here to just give this honor, this privilege unto him. That's not too much. That's not too much. And so God now said, all right, Joshua, I know your heart. I'll talk to you. In verse, uh, that's Joshua chapter 7, up verse 10. The Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up. Wherefore, liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel have seen, Joshua. I don't do anything without a reason, Joshua. I cannot abandon the people without a reason, Joshua. Israel have seen, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of their cursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they, have, they were accursed. Neither will I go, will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy the accursed thing from among you. So the Lord spoke to him and gave him the reason why. Chapter 22. Joshua, chapter 22. That story never led the people of Israel. In Joshua chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 16. Thus says the whole congregation of the Lord, What trespass is this? That ye have committed against the God of Israel to turn away this day from following the Lord. In that ye have builded you an altar. That ye might rebel this day against the Lord. What had happened is the tribe of um, Reuben and the tribe of Gad and now the tribe of Manasseh. They went to the other side and they built an altar. And the children of Israel heard and they said, wait. You are building an altar. There should be only one altar. Why do you want to rebel against the Lord? And then we'll get into the same problem of the past again. Look at verse 17. Is the iniquity of pale too little for us? From which we are not cleansed, we are not free until this day. Although there was a plague in the congregation of the Lord. But that ye must turn away this day from following the Lord. And it will be, seeing ye rebel today against the Lord, that tomorrow he will be wrought for the whole congregation of Israel. You see, what's happened in chapter 7? Uh, put them on their feet. Vigilant. They didn't want that thing to happen again, notwithstanding. If the land of your possession be unclean, then pass ye over unto the land of the possession of the Lord, wherein the Lord's tabernacle dwelleth, and take possession among us. But rebel not against the Lord, nor rebel against us, in building you an altar before the altar of the Lord our God. There's an altar here. Why are you building another altar over there? If the Lord sees that double standard, he may be angry with us. Please, if where you are is not all right for you, come over to this side. We'll deny ourselves and give you land. Did not, in verse 20, did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in their cursed sin, and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel. And that man perished not alone in his iniquity. His iniquity brought death upon many, many people. Think about that. The next time you want to do something, you have temptation to do something wrong. 
you might be bringing trouble on many other people. That person did not perish only. It wasn't only himself alone that perished, but other people perished in that transgression. And this is the reason why problem came and trouble came. We're looking at Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. From verse 14. Leviticus chapter 26. Verse 14. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but, ye, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and a burning ache that shall consume the eyes and, and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, and your enemies shall eat it. You see what came upon them? What was to come upon them if they did not obey the Lord? But we're not going to remain in that situation. The Lord is going to take it away. When we cooperate with the Lord, come back to Joshua chapter 7, point number 3, remedy for failure and defeat. Remedy for failure and defeat. Verse 12 and verse 13. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I, go, will I be with you anymore except you destroy their consciousness from among you. Up. Sanctify your, the people. And say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel, that thou canst not stand before thine enemies until, that's the condition, until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. This is what the Lord is telling us. That if we found the reason why the Lord is not happy with us. And he says, take this away, take this away. Then we take it away. By the way, can you look up here? How many people died in air? How many of the children of Israel? How many people? 36. They have relatives. God did not tell their relatives, why they died. He told Joshua. And Joshua was the one that had the responsibility to say, this calamity, the reason it is happening is this. God did not tell the officers. He did not tell the priests. He told Joshua. And he said, Joshua, now, don't you see, in this story, Joshua and the leaders and the elders, they fell on their faces, praying, saying, Oh Lord, why is this happening to us? Not just Joshua, but with the elders, or the leaders, they wrenched their clothes, they put doors on their head, look at verse 6, and Joshua wrenched his clothes and fell on the earth upon his face, before the ark of the Lord until the evening until evening tide. And he and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. And then we're told about the prayer. But the Lord did not tell those elders sometimes. The rest of us may not know. And if I come here and I'm doing all this shouting. And I'm saying, God is not happy with this. God is not happy with this. And there are some elders there that say, but we have the same concern for the church. And we don't see anything wrong in this, anything wrong in that. And the Lord has not spoken to us that, you know, all this thing that the pastor is, you know, shouting about, we don't see anything to each. Yes, the Lord may not have, might not have shown you, but he's shown Joshua. 
And if God has revealed to Joshua that we need to put this in place and put this in place and put this in place, what's the big deal? And, you know, by the grace of God, even though you might be state of us here today, wasn't it under my ministry you got born again? If you are rich and overseer today, wasn't it under my ministry you got born again? And if you are a leader here today, wasn't it me that the Almighty God used to bring this message of life? All the fiery preachers we have today, sometimes when I listen to all these fiery preachers, I say, praise God, now I can sit down. Because God has used me to train you and to develop you. And whatever it is you are doing here in the church today, this is the man God has used. And look at all this choir. I spoke to them the other time. I started the choir, the first choir in deeper life here. And I put all those things together. Some of the choruses you sing, I compose them. And the songs you have in the Monday Bible study, some songs you've never seen in your life before, I put them there. I'm not a novice in music. And if, if we have choir at all, was I not an organist? Was I not the one? Do you remember? Do your sins be as college? That song. We recorded each in, in, in the, in the um, you know, in the, uh, what do you call it now? Not just, uh, not just a cassette. What do I use? Uh, not just tape. This uh, <laughs> in the records. I, I played there. I played there something there. I want what to you, but you know, having a Bible study. I used to play the organ before I will come to preach. What are we doing here now? That I did not start. And if I started it, and God used me to train and raise you people up. If I then say, this is how to do it. And say, old man, keep quiet. You are, I can tell you to keep quiet. You don't have a right to shut me up. And when God reveals to me that this is what you do, you will break your neck if you oppose me. But if we walk like father and children, and you realize that you are grateful. If I have planted a seed, should I not have the privilege of eating out of the fruit? I'm not asking church for money. I'm not asking you to build a house for me. I don't have a personal car in deeper life. All these cars I ride, they are bought in the name of deeper life. If I die, my relatives will not have anything. I don't have a house in my hometown. The house I live there belongs to the church. The office here belongs to the church. I don't have anything. All I'm asking for is that this is holiness. And that you help me and give me the fruit of my hand. I planted it. I have a right. To say, this is what I want. If I say, this is the kind of music I want, that will help me, make me happy. What else are you going to give me? I don't want salary in deeper life. Nothing. All I'm asking for is that this word that I established, that before I die, that you people, it just show all oh, the yes and yes are nearly done for me. What does that do for me? Don't you know where I was? My colleague at the University of Lagos, I don't want to mention his name, Prof. He's a professor now. The last time he saw me, he bent down to me. Because even though we had first class together, I beat him. All over West Africa, he's number one mathematician. Anytime he's, he's at the University of Lagos, anytime he sees me, he respects me. If I give him any advice, he obeys. He's not even a Christian. Because he knows what I left. And then I come here, and then I sit down here, and in my presence, while I'm still alive, then I say, this is what you do, brothers and sisters. If I call you a brother... 
Maybe you are 45. I'm going to 66 years of age. If at my age, I respect you. You know, sometimes when I greet some of you young people, I bend down a little. And I know you are just 43 years of age. And I'm beyond 65. And I bend down to you. What else am I going to do? I teach you. I preach to you. No salary. No house. No personal car. Nothing. And then I say, please, this is the word of God. Let us obey. And then you make fun of me. What are you going to give me? Do you want me to die regretting that I gave my life? Shut up, those people. If we're going to actually have the joy and the fruit of ministry, you should appreciate sacrifice. And I see a man that stretches himself, does everything. At his age. And it says here. Let us take care of the accursed thing. This is not right. or put it. This is not right. Remove it. God has not shown you. has shown me. This is not the way we started. Remove this one. This one was not in the original plan. Remove this one. That is very simple. Thank you sir. Thank you daddy. We'll remove it. Men. You are married, you have children. After send your children to school. And you live on your children. And the children come back. And say, my child, do this. And the child looks at you. As if you are a non-entity. As if you are nobody. And says, what are you saying? Your own child. That you trained that you spent your whole resources to bring up. How do you feel? Well, change. All I'm asking for is what the Bible demands. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Those of us who are here. I met a boy the other time. I wonder whether he knew. The story of how he came to this world. But I know. His father and mother. They were married. Here in Lagos. In deeper life. I was still lecturer at the University of Lagos. They have married for many years. No child. And the brother at that time. Had a particular sickness. I went out. I came back to flat two. While I came back. I saw somebody sleeping in front of my house. I woke him up. I said. Who are you? Then he introduced, he said, I'm sick. I'm having a problem. That's why he said, I will sleep here until you come. And then I said, let us pray. I prayed for him. And then the wife got pregnant and had a child. And that child may not know the story. The child is now at the university. I saw him the other day. I looked at the boy. I said, this boy does not know the story. Of wow, God used me to just pray for his father like that. And sometimes some of these young people, God used me to pray for, for their prayers. And they came to this world. Sometimes they see me and their action to me. And the way they, they, they relate with me, I, I say, what? Is this a cross we're supposed to bear? Why can't we follow the Bible and this holiness stand on it? What's in your hand that is too much? You cannot drop. And say yes, this word, this man is teaching us. We'll take off this accursed thing. And then we'll make progress. Can we do it? Let's rise up and pray. Examine yourself. What's so serious you cannot drop for the Lord? What are we holding on to? Can we get to heaven without holiness? Why would you encourage those who are doing evil to do evil? Are you happy when I'm sorrowful? You are glad when I'm sad. And if the pastor challenges some young people not to do something, and you encourage them to do that thing, 
You have forgotten how God used me in your life, in your family, in your ministry. Don't repay good with evil. I don't gossip about you. Do you gossip about me? I wish the best for you. Do you wish evil for me? I'm praying for you. I'm trying to help you. Your success and your victory is my joy. Is the failure and the downfall of the ministry your own joy? Many of you, I knew you when you were teenagers. Many of you, I knew you when you were still students. All these labors of ministry over your life, over your ministry. And you want to tear down the ministry. I want to encourage these upcoming generation young people to tear down the ministry. What's the goal? What's the purpose? And we're trying to build. But you're trying to encourage people to pull down. What's the goal? What's the purpose? You want to be a master on somebody else's labor? You want to drive me out of the ministry God used me to raise up? You are in the music ministry. God used me to raise it up. Want to drive me out of it as you have no say, no word. That's not Christian living. If a man has started something, planted something, and God gave me the vision. If you had any concert, was I not the one that said there should be concert? All these improvements and all these things that you see. The vision. Was I not the one that laid down? Congress. Was I not the one that said, as God led me, we're going to have Congress? Were you the one that established Congress? Why don't you come with appreciation? And all these other things that are coming in, we'll remove them. You're an usher. We don't find people to usher if we didn't gather the people together. Security. What are you going to secure? If we put all this building here, they put all these people, all this program, if we interest them up, what are you going to secure? And preachers, prayer warriors. If God didn't use me to bring the people together, how are you going to manifest your gift? Be grateful and show the gratitude and remove the accursed thing that the Lord has revealed to me the pride, the ego, the disobedience, the rebellion. Take it away. Will God say congratulations because you despise your father? Will God say well done because you bite the hand feeding you? Even unbelievers are grateful to their benefactors. Even sinners appreciate those who do good to them.
we should not be so proud as to expect is our father that will come and prostrate for us he will beg us are you happy when your father comes to beg you to prostrate for you is that a blessing or a curse when your father comes to prostrate for you all right i am sorry That's what you are waiting for. Is it not the child to repent and give to the father the honor that is due to the father? The Lord is demanding that whatever it is in our heart that was not there before, that has not come in, We'll get rid of them up sanctify the people and tell them sanctify yourselves and take away the accursed thing from among you otherwise i will not be with you anymore make it a total commitment not rising and falling all right today, all wrong tomorrow. Repentant today and rebellious tomorrow. Submissive today but stubborn tomorrow. If we want to serve the Lord, why don't we serve the Lord consistently? And say for the rest of my life, my goal is heaven, not position, not politics. My goal is to serve the Lord with all my heart, all my soul. No private agenda, no personal ambition, no spirit of Absalom in me. All I want is to serve the Lord. Let the Lord deal with your attitude, deal with your heart. Let the Lord deal with that heart that is opposed to progress. Don't despise your father. Even in the natural, in the natural, our fathers who did not know about salvation, our fathers who did not know about spiritual things, even our fathers that ill-treated us when we were much younger, we don't despise them. As we get older and we become real Christians, we overlook the bad things our natural fathers did against us. And we still obey them now, support them now, we we'll make their last days on earth happy. How much more a spiritual father How much more a father who sows spiritual things into your life. That this experience of holiness and sanctification be real, abiding. Genuine, lasting, without hypocrisy. Or don't you believe the Bible? Sincerely and seriously, don't you believe? 
Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Don't you really believe? Your position in the church, your activity in the church should not be so much exalted above the experience of holiness that will take you to heaven. Don't misplace your priorities. Holiness first. If there's chance to preach, all right, but holiness first. If there's chance to sing, all right, but holiness first. If there's chance to usher and to be in the security, that's all right, but holiness first. If there's any chance to be a worker, full-time worker, that's okay, but holiness first. Don't allow being in full-time or part-time or any other thing, position. To become number one, holiness first. And follow peace with God and with all men. And holiness too, without which no man, no one shall see the Lord. Skill without sanctification will not take us to heaven. Ministry without holiness will not take us to heaven. And if we're deliberately disobedient, can we say that's holiness? If we encourage other people to walk contrary to the church and to the leadership of the church, and we give them ideas, methods, how to show their disobedience and rebellion in, in the public to influence other people to disregard church leadership. Is that holiness? Holiness is the reason why we're gathered here. If there's no holiness, the singing is useless. If there's no holiness, the ushering is worthless. If we have security men and security women, and the security men and women are so effective as to take our holiness away from us, better not to have security. Not to have security and lose holiness. If we have dynamic preachers and the dynamic preachers make us to lose holiness, get rid of those preachers. When we didn't have all this, um, you know, powerful preaching, the simple preaching, we had our holiness. Give us our holiness, even if you can't give us more. 1981, 1982, we were here. We didn't have this building. We didn't have all these instruments. We didn't have all this beautiful singing. But we add holiness. If you can't support us, sustain that holiness, keep your singing. Keep your music. We can do without it. Holiness is a watch word and song. That's why we're here. That's the reason for the existence of deeper life. Humility. Obedience. Love. Integrity. A new life. Endurance. Separation from the world. Separation from all sin. That's our holiness. That's why we're here. If you are not in agreement, you can check out. We we'll want you, but if you don't want our holiness, then we cannot stay together. 
Follow peace with all men and holiness without which 